<laughs> what is up, everybody? Here we are at the Snipe Life. So welcome to the Snipe Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And today we're going to be talking about the Roman system. <laughs> There's way too much to talk about here. And so we're going to specifically be talking about the characters in The Chosen. So let me know if you're excited. Write in the chat, say something awesome, and uh, make sure to like the video, because that's going to help us get this out to more and more people. So yeah. Oh, should probably mute my own stream. But here we go. Let's talk about the Romans. <laughs> Uh, our awesome, awesome characters that we have here uh, in The Chosen. So here we go. How are you guys doing? Pretty well? Good. We're here together. My name is Brandon, if you don't know. And this is my wife. Vanessa. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about some awesome characters who we all know as, first of all, Gaius. The first one, the first Roman that we meet by name in the series. And then next we meet Quintus. And then lastly, uh, we meet Atticus. Those are kind of the main Romans that we are talking about um, in this uh, series. And so we're going to be talking about um, just kind of everything that's that's going on and um, who they are, what their positions are, and hopefully give you a little bit more understanding of, you know, what the Roman Empire looked like um, and, um, and all of that. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions along the way and uh, and we'll get into it for sure. Love these videos. Thank you so much, Patricia. Hit the like button. Thanks, Em, as always, our, our like ambassador over here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah, let's get into it. So I'm Wait, just going to show you. quick shout out to the members. just cause, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, go uh, ahead. You want to shout them out? Raquel and uh, Timothy. Timothy. Yeah. I love this comment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Generally, we just call you guys the Snipe Fam. Snipers count sounds a little bit too aggressive for me. I think. <laughs> My gamer tag is Mrs. Sniper. Yeah, true, true. OP. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to jump in. Let me share the screen real fast. And we will jump into um, kind of some of the things that we have seen in the series so far. And kind of some general things about the Roman Empire, uh, you know, in general, obviously. Mm -hmm. So first off, we see um, in episode four, actually, you remember this scene here. So I'm just going to play this. There's not going to be any sound, so don't freak out. Don't don't <laughs> yell at me. No sound. We see this scene here. Now, this is very important, right? Because this is what we think about when we think of the Roman guard, right? And how they treat people. This is the face that a lot of Jews probably had during that time, right? Um, and so for us... You know, we think about the Romans and the Roman Empire and how they were structured. And we think of these Roman soldiers with the classic kind of, you know, mane across the head and the, and the helmet and, and the, the boots. Metal, metal ear thing. Right. And the armor that they wear. <laughs> this is what we kind of think about when we think of, you know, Romans. Yeah. And, and and naturally, I guess that is true for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. um, these Romans were stationed everywhere in Israel. And this is what we're going to kind of focus on. We're not going to focus on the whole Roman Empire. There's way too much to talk about, and I'm definitely not an expert in history. So let me say that beforehand. Neither it made of us... my head hurt when <laughs> we were researching it. It was just yeah. like, they're that, like, obviously, it's the Roman Empire. Yeah. They were huge. Yeah, there's, there's so many positions and so many different things. Even understanding the difference between, like, an emperor and and a Caesar and all of that, like it's really, it gets really confusing. And so we're going to be talking about just the characters within the chosen and what their roles are and kind of who they are. And so it, it is kind of interesting just to talk through that mm -hmm. and, um, and to see how Rome was structured just in the show, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so generally Rome is, is, you know, they're an occupying force in Israel, right? Mm -hmm. During the time of Jesus. And during the time of Jesus, Rome is in like its heyday. Like this is like one of the strongest empires like this is before they have obviously fallen and before everything else happens with Rome. This is a very, very, very strong empire, very large empire. Obviously they had taken over Jerusalem. They had taken over Israel <clears throat> and that whole area. Right. Um, and so this is a force to be reckoned with. And the, and the Israelites knew that, right. The, the Jewish people knew that. And, um, and that's why they didn't fight back for a very, very long time because they knew there was no way that they could win. Um, I believe in 66 AD is when they tried to revolt. And even that was kind of squashed immediately. Mm, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, the Romans are, are a force to be reckoned with. It starts with Caesar all the way up on top and it goes all the way down to all the slaves that they owned from everywhere. Right. And the Jewish people for the most part are considered kind of these like people in between that they, they kind of lord over, but they're not necessarily slaves to the empire. Mm -hmm. They're kind of their own people that live and, and, and do their own things. But the big caveat to that is that Rome wanted to control everything that these people did. And why did they want to do this? The number one reason why they wanted to do this is because they wanted to make everybody that they took over, right? Every country that they took over, 
every person that they uh, brought into the fold, right? They wanted to make them Romans. And so they wanted the Jews no longer to be Jews, but they wanted them to become Romans. And so this is a, a big, big deal because within all of this, right? Um, it, it, the Romans aren't trying to wipe out a civilization. They're not trying to wipe out the Jews. They're not trying to kill them. They're trying to transform them to become Romans, right? And we call this Hellenism in a lot of ways, um, where they would enforce different things from their religions. They would enforce different things from their architecture. They would enforce different things from their governments in order for people to kind of slowly become Roman, uh, you know, part of the Roman Empire. And so, um, you know, we see this even with Gaius. Gaius used to be a Germanic person, right? We see that um, he talks about that a lot, that his family descent was from Germany, basically. Um, but then his family slowly became Romans over time to the point where when he was a boy, even, um, you know, he was already training to become a Roman soldier. And so that's kind of a brief overview of what, like, what Rome looks like. But I want to focus in on these three characters that we have and talk a little bit more about just oh, how did we meet them? What are their jobs and how do they fit within this system of the Roman Empire to give us a bit more context to, to do a better job of understanding you know, what's going on. So yeah. Did I miss anything there? You feel good about that? That was a lot of information. It's, it is a lot of information. <laughs> so I'm glad that you guys are sticking around. Uh, let us know if you have any questions along the way and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Like I said, I am no historian. Um, you know, I'm, I'm no expert in this at all. And so, you know, I'm doing the best that I can to study and to just talk about it. So let's talk about our first character that we have from the Roman empire. And that would be Gaius. And so Gaius, oop, let me put this up right here. Wait, didn't we meet Nicodemus first? Yeah, but, yeah, but we're going to go in this order specifically. Okay. So we didn't, it was Nicodemus, it was Quintus, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, you're good. So we've got uh, Matthew here, and this is the first time that we meet Gaius. Remember, he is kind of uh, a bodyguard for Matthew in this way. Um, he is a centurion, and so um, at least we believe that he's a centurion during this time. I don't know if we get clarification on that. Um, but he is basically taking care of Matthew as a bodyguard to protect him from all the people that would want to kill him because he's a tax collector. Mm -hmm. Right. And so Gaius is protecting him throughout the streets and protecting him at the booth, um, as we meet him for the first time. And this is important because we see Gaius where he starts off at, right? First of all, he hates Matthew. He doesn't want to be here. He's in a position where he's not really getting that much acclaim, if that makes sense. And he's not that powerful in the totem pole at all. Um, if he is a centurion, what does that mean for Gaius? You want to explain a little bit about that, or you want me to go, go into that? Centurions were over, weren't, weren't they over the century? Century, yeah. Yeah, which was yeah. only 80, which right. is confusing because a century is 100. <laughs> <laughs> right. Generally, there was a force, a, a group of soldiers, right, called a century, which is about 80 men. And so a centurion would be over those 80 men. So right now, if he is a centurion in this part right here, which I believe that he is, he would be over 80 men um, kind of, you know, making sure that they did what they needed to do and they were in the places that they needed to be at um, and all of that. And so, you know, he was pretty powerful in, in that sense, but not in the grand scheme of things, right? Like mm -hmm. a legion is, you know, a ton of Roman soldiers and he's not even close to being, you know, a part of controlling that, you know, mm -hmm. he's just a part of a very small cog in the whole clock. Right. Um, and so we see him there. Now, an interesting thing that happens with Gaius is he does get a promotion later on. And so we see um, at almost at the end of season one, uh, we see this scene here where Gaius is with Matthew and he's with Quintus, who we're going to talk about in a second. And Gaius is, um, about to get a, a promotion from Quintus. And what is this promotion? So right now Gaius is a centurion, but then Gaius then gets moved to a different position called a preemie. Okay. And so that is short for, uh, you got to read this cause I can't remember everything. Uh, it's short for preemie ordinance. Okay. So what is a, a preemie ordinance? A preemie ordinance is a centurion still, but it's a very high level of centurion. And so to explain that, I kind of have to dive deep into, um, into another part of this, this whole system. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. Yeah. Denny's giving us some, some insight here. It originally started with a hundred and was, and was so until at least Julius Caesar died in. Dang, I love our smart viewers. Thanks so much. Smart viewers. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all great. Um, <laughs> so 
we're seeing him as he's being basically promoted to a Primi Ordinez. Okay, so Primi Ordinez, what is that? So I want you to think of this in, in, in the terms of a legion. Okay, so a legion in the Roman Empire is 10 cohorts put together. I thought it was eight. It's 10 total. So 10 cohorts put together within those 10 cohorts, right? Each cohort is made up of six um, centuries, basically. Okay. So it, it's going to be confusing, but hold on just a second. Okay. In the Legion, all of those cohorts are labeled. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now one cohort number one was the most important. Okay. And within that cohort, things ran a little bit differently than the rest of them, okay, than the rest of the, the 10, the nine, right, that were left over. So within number one, cohort number one, there were centurions, yes, but these were the highest of the highest centurions. And so this is what um, Gaius is being raised to, okay? Yeah, primo ordinate of the first or higher order. Thanks so much, Denny. It really helps to give some clarity for sure. Um, so Gaius is now being moved from a regular centurion up to a primi ordinance, which is um, a higher, like a basically a senior centurion. And they're, they're in charge of the most powerful group. So if a regular centurion is in charge of 80 men, then a, a primi ordinance is in charge of about 160, okay? So that means he has more power. He's closer to the, the higher forms of government, basically. Mm -hmm. And he's just, you know, it's a better position. I'm sure he's getting paid more. I'm sure that he has a better living space and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, basically, he has more control and he, he's, he's not going to be watching over tax booths in this position. He's going to be in a much better position, basically, as as this type of premium ordinance, which we see in season two, right? His, his role is obviously very different. He's no longer watching over that tax booth. He's doing other things, including bringing Jesus in in episode seven. And so I wanted to go there real fast as well. Anything you want to say? No. Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Centurions are the first cohort in the Legion. Yeah, exactly, James. Um, and so the, the Primi Ordinates became the first. They were they were mm -hmm. the Centurions in that first cohort, um, which made him very... Um, special basically and so you can see as guys is getting the promotion that he's excited he's really really glad that he's gotten this promotion because yeah. it probably means a lot of good things for him and his family um and so next we see this scene from episode seven where uh gaius is in charge of this kind of small group this is obviously not his full cohort right his full cohort would be close to um would be close to like 160 and not just like you know 10 <laughs> mm -hmm. like it is here uh, but he's just taking a small group because he didn't think this would be a big deal kind of going to arrest jesus right, right. and obviously i don't think they wanted 160 actors to <laughs> you know <laughs> come out on this as well so i'm sure that, that was part of it as well but we see here as gaius is in complete control mm -hmm. of everything um you know these guards are not kind of working on their own they're just listening to everything that gaius says and waiting for him to kind of tell them what to do mm -hmm. you can also see the varying ranks within this group right we see some of the helmets without the large like headdress on it some of them with the large headdress so maybe he has other centurions with him in this group as well uh i don't, I don't know exactly but um like i said i don't know everything about this but um but i'm trying to do my best guys so i hope this helps is this helping you guys do you guys have a better understanding of who gaius is and like kind of what his position is please let me know in the chat i really love talking to you guys in the chat so um so yeah thanks so much Extras are hard to control. People <laughs> bet, in general yeah. are hard to control. Yeah, I'm sure for this for that mission in episode seven, anyways, they wouldn't have brought uh, like a whole um, a whole team. So thanks, M. Thanks, M, for the feedback so much. <laughs> if anybody else is getting value out of this, please let us know. Hey, by the way, if you can't chat right now, if you're trying to chat and you can't check to see if you're subscribed, I have the chat in subscriber only mode. But all you have to do is hit subscribe, and then you can immediately chat, okay? There's not even a 60-second timer. There's nothing on there. All you have to do is uh, subscribe, and then um, and then you can you can chat in there. So Sherry says, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, so that's Gaius. Gaius is now a Primi Ordinez, which is a centurion of a higher rank, okay? So he's he's doing really well. He's getting up in the ranks, and, and he's doing what a Roman soldier should, should right? Um, in the Roman Empire. So he's he's just gradually getting up up there and up there. Um, now, the next person I want to talk about is Quintus. Um, let's, let's, <laughs> let's jump into Quintus a little bit. So the first time we meet Quintus is actually one of the very first scenes that we see in the Chosen period, right? Um, we see him as he approaches Nicodemus 
to kind of talk to him to solve some problems that he's been having with the Jews. Um, and so we see in episode one is he doesn't want the Jews to fish on Shabbat, right? And this is to kind of control the population a little bit. And so basically what he's doing in order to do this is he doesn't want to just go there and like kill some Jews and make a scene. He wants the town to stay peaceful. He wants the, st- the town to stay orderly, right? And so in order to do this, he goes to a religious leader, Nicodemus in this case, who can kind of get this done for him without causing a ruckus, without causing any issues, right? Yeah. Um, and so... And this this reminds me of Pilate and, say, the high priest, Caiaphas. Caiaphas, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, how he would probably have a good relationship with Caiaphas. Like, how Caiaphas was, at least in the Passion of the Christ, he was, like, leading the charge mm-hmm. to, to getting him executed. So... Well, yeah, he surely thought that, that Jesus was a heretic mm-hmm. and that he needed to go, for sure. Yeah. Um, but Caiaphas was always was also loyal to Rome. Mm. You know? That's interesting. Like Rome Why why aren't they looked down upon now? I'm asking questions. Sorry. Mm. No, you're good. Um, why aren't they looked down upon like tax collectors if they are also working for because they're Rome? also the rulers of the Jewish the, it's a it's a theocracy, right? Like it's ah. it's that's why the, Yanni is so adamant about going higher and higher. And, yeah, and, yeah. Because hmm. the more the higher he goes, the more power he gets. But also, the safer he is from Rome, as long as he's loyal to them too. Ah. So like, at at, so at one point within like the at one point within the whole structure, the Romans decided that they could no longer pick their own high priests. Romans mm-hmm. decided to pick their high priests for them. That's interesting. And so this became a really big issue. Like Romans did a lot of things that, that the Jews did not like at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they would put up symbols of their own gods. Whenever the Jews, whenever the Jews would do sacrifices to Yahweh, they would also make them do sacrifices to the Roman empire, mm-hmm. like as, as its own entity. Right. Like, and, and so there's a bunch of Jews that, that, were really, really angry at this, especially in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Right. And they would try to revolt and they would try to like say, no, like, like, you know, uh, protest it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like they would basically get shut down or, you know, in some cases I'm sure they were killed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but this, it was not a a good thing for them to kind of, you know, sit on. So Mm -hmm. anyway, so moving on. So Quintus, what is his role? Who is he? What does it mean? So in this first kind of scene, we're, we're told that he's a magistrate. And so generally how I understand this, and if Denny or Timothy or anybody else has a better kind of idea of this, generally what what he's said to be is a magistrate, which is kind of like a general um, area of wealth and dignification and status, right? So magistrate is like this area of of, um, um, status, yeah, like of, of a certain point of person. But also magistrate in general means like a lawmaker, someone who is like kind of uh, taking care of the area, controlling things in the area, right? And so we see this um, in in Capernaum where Quintus is, right? And so later on, we kind of hear a different name from Quintus, which is Praetor. Mm-hmm. Now, Praetor is specifically kind of like a judge. Um, he's also like a lawmaker for the area. He's in charge of collecting taxes for Rome in order to pay for things like the games that they, that they did in Rome. Um, and there's a lot of other things that kind of come along with that, but essentially how you can think of Quintus is he's a ruler for the area. And so this specific area being Capernaum and the area around Capernaum, um, you know, uh, Quintus was a praetor for that specific area, a leader for that specific area, Mm. um, a Roman ruler for that specific area. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so praetors actually were really, really high up in, um, in this whole system. And so if you're a praetor, I mean, you're a big deal at most, I, at least from my research, the, the most, the biggest number that I could find was that at one time there was 18 praetors. And so at, at the very least there was like three or four. And then it, you know, kind of grew over time and, and different people were praetors at different times. And it, like I said, it's extremely complicated, but the praetor is, is not a position that is um, like, Oh, like there's a million of them. This is a really high position. And so for, Quintus, he is extremely powerful. I mean, think about it. If if Gaius is a primi ordinus, right, a centurion who is in control of about 180 men, and and um, Quintus can just tell him whatever he wants him to do, mm-hmm. right? But he also has all these other centurions within the legion that he can control, right? Um, now, Quintus, I don't think is part of the Senate uh, itself, which is a, another big thing in Rome that we're not going to get into. But what I want you to pull from this is that Quintus is extremely powerful. 
If he wants someone to die, they're going to die. If he wants someone to go away, they're going to go away. If he wants someone to pay their taxes, they better find a way to pay their taxes. Mm. And this is why like Andrew and Peter were so afraid in season one, because not only did they owe taxes and stuff, but now they've gotten Quintus involved with all of what Peter got involved with, with him, right? Mm. Promising him that he would stop the fishing on Shabbat and all that. Yeah. So he's a pretty scary guy for sure. And, and in, in the series itself, you know, we see him as he's kind of this dual personality. He's playful at some points. And then at other points you see him as he gets extremely serious. And, you know, he talks about different things like, um, you know, when his childhood rival is coming to town and, and he, he asks Matthew, you know, how would you deal with the situation? Matthew gives him a, an answer, you know, talk, tell him about your infrastructure, tell him about your, your plans, you know, to conquer this area basically. And Quintus, you can see, immediately gets super, super serious. And he begins pulling out these maps and infrastructure plans and just is like delving over them. And he's obviously extremely good at what he yeah, does. Yeah, he's an intellectual. He wouldn't be in the position that he was in if he wasn't smart, you know? Yeah. And um, I know this first scene may, may seem confusing because he's like wearing armor and stuff. I don't know if Praetors actually would have worn armor like this. Um uh, maybe he would have worn more like robes and stuff, but maybe because he's in like a hostile environment, he's wearing armor. I I'm not, I'm not sure um, a hundred percent, but um, I know that they had like specific robes and stuff that they would wear specific um, ornaments that they would be allotted because they were such a high position, mm -hmm. um, which is uh which is interesting for sure. Let's see. I'm going to read some of these, some of these comments real fast. Quintus sounds like an astute politician. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely trying to make his way up there, right? Like he's a praetor, which is already super, super high in government. But if he can become like a senator, you know, mm -hmm. and and get that much power, like a senator is um is Would in control. Be, wouldn't wouldn't Pilot be the governor? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Senator would be under a governor. I'm not sure. It's so confusing. Okay. <laughs> I like, I tried to study so hard for this and I'm still confused about some of the Roman empire. I'm sure it would take me a lot longer to, to really dive into that, but I wanted to, again, our focus is on these characters. So I wanted to focus on them mm -hmm. um, specifically. And, and like Vanessa was saying earlier, I want to dive that back into that a little bit. So pilot. Yeah. Was the governor of the area. And so, Pilate, uh, we know him because, you know, he had this interaction with Jesus and he's also the one who ordered Jesus's death, let, let Barabbas go, um, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Pilate, um, he is the, the top dog, right? Like he had this huge palace basically in Caesarea where he, he lived on the coast um, of the Mediterranean and, you know, he, he stayed there and, and had all these a lot of things happen there basically in Caesarea, but he was in charge of all of it. I mean, he's the boss of Quintus. He's the boss of everybody, but he had the same relationship, um, you know, as Quintus has with Nicodemus here, he kind of has the same, uh, probably a tighter relationship with Caiaphas, the high priest. And so Pilate, as he's talking to Caiaphas, um, they would talk back and forth, trying to, trying to, um, you know, basically make sure that everything was peaceful amongst the Romans and the Jews and that things weren't going too far either way. And always Pilate had the upper hand, right? At any time he could kill Caiaphas or, or replace him or whatever. But what would that do to society? It would probably, you know, make things more volatile for, for, for Pilate, right? Mm -hmm. And it would make it harder for him to rule the area without all of these revolts and everything else that he would have to deal with. Because right now it's a generally peaceful time where, you know, Rome is in control and the Jews are kind of allowing it to happen. Other than, of course, the fourth sect, the Zealots, right? Um, who we know uh, do not like Rome one bit and and want to basically um, kill anybody that's in power that's not Jewish. Um, and so this is a, definitely a big deal. So Quintus, he's a praetor. And uh, we see as he, um, you know, in this scene as well from episode seven, where he brings Jesus in to talk to him. This is not biblical. I know I, I heard some people kind of talking about this uh, scene as well. And um and he, a senator would actually be pilot. Sorry, let me read this. Direct superior. Yeah, that's what I thought, James. So James is saying a senator would actually be pilot's direct superior. Pilot would have been a knight. Okay, so yeah. pilot is pilot is extremely high up. He's he's definitely in charge of of a lot of army, a lot of people in this area specifically. Obviously, had a lot of power. 
uh, to say who is going to be executed or not. But with Quintus here, we see him in his element, right? He's in his office as always, eating his olives as always. And um, he's in this position of power talking to Jesus. And, um, you know, we see a lot of different things here uh, from from episode seven where, um, you know, this conversation in particular is really interesting because Quintus is finding Jesus to be a lot smarter, um, a lot more, a lot different than he expected him to be. Um, and so as Jesus is kind of answering his questions and challenging him a little bit, Quintus is finally finding someone that he um, almost relates with in a way that, that is, you know, another person who is good at their job, another person who is uh, very intelligent and, and kind of, uh, you know, ready to have this conversation, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so Quintus is um, in charge of this whole area and you can kind of think of him in that way. Uh, hope that makes sense so far. We're going to talk about one more person, but I'm going to take any questions real fast. Talk to anything. Um, talk to any uh, commenters that we have here. So the Roman Empire had a democracy with an elected Senate for 500 years before Julius Caesar took over and died in 44 BC. And then on, they had dictatorial Caesars who were all powerful. Yeah. So the Caesar after uh, Julius was his his adopted son, right, who became Augustus, basically. Um, but he had several different names, which is also super um, confusing, like Octavian, Octavianus. Um, and um, and basically he became uh, Caesar after Julius, which was the Caesar during the time of Jesus, I believe. Um, but yeah, uh, very, very, very crazy. But we see in scripture as well, you know, talking about this, the, the tax to Caesar and all that stuff. And Jesus says, you know, give to Caesar, what is Caesar's give to God? What is God's? Um, I just wanted to highlight him. He's one of our patrons. And yeah, I what's up, Matthew? <laughs> always love seeing you. Matthew's one of our patrons. If you guys do want to support us or hang out with us uh, with extra content and stuff like that, we've got our Patreon and we've also got channel members. So if you guys want to join as a channel member, uh, you can just hit that join button below this video and uh, and do that there. So yeah, bad news from the territories or regions could get a governor killed. Yeah, for sure. And that's this is what Quintus is talking about here with Jesus, right? He's saying, Jesus, you've done a lot of great things, but you've also done some horrible things for me that could have could have made me lose my job, right? Um, so if, if Peter hadn't paid that debt, right, it would have been really bad for Quintus. He probably would have been killed or lost his job at the very, very least been demoted, right? Um, and so Jesus kind of saved him from that whole situation, which he's saying, hey, thank you for that right? Thank you for doing that. But you've also done these other things like, you know, causing a stampede downtown or, um, you know, basically making my life a little bit harder. Um, so I can't have you doing that anymore. And he basically threatens Jesus. I mean, he does straight up threaten Jesus. He says, um, you know, I can't promise that you won't stop breathing, which is pretty intense. This is why it was such a huge deal that Matthew was on his good side. Matthew, uh, had it made and gave it all up. Yeah, hundred percent, Matthew. Um, yeah, this is this is a, another thing where you know Matthew had everything, but he had nothing. You know, like he had the choice to just stay in his cushy job. Everybody would hate him, sure, but he'd have unlimited money, basically everything he would ever need. And he's on the good side of Quintus, so you know who knows where that could have led him. He's not a Roman citizen. But, you know, working for the Roman government and, and getting paid like that and being on the good side of the Romans, I mean, what else could you ask for as a Jew, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely a, a interesting thing there for sure. There have been some thoughts uh, that Gaius is the soldier at the cross. So it's possible, you know, he's the premi ordinance right now, which is still a centurion. Uh, there are some centurion stories uh, kind of in the Bible that he could fit into. And I've heard a lot of those theories. Uh, I, I don't know how accurate they are. I know that Dallas probably has a lot of long-term, you know, secrets and stuff that he's going to pull out. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does have a plan for Gaius specifically. Um, and Gaius's heart definitely seems to be a one that is caring, right? Even for Matthew, he kind of despises him in the first couple episodes. But then by the time we reach the, the end of season one, Gaius loves Matthew and he wants to take care of him. He wants to make sure that he's all right. Um, he wants to make sure that he's he's taken care of, even to the point where in episode seven, right, we see this this moment with Jesus where uh, Gaius is like, you know, he yeah. he's used to being fed, you know, he's used to he's used to, um, you know, being in, in this cushy life. Why aren't you taking care of him? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it becomes this whole thing for for Gaius, for sure. Um, but yeah, so that's Gaius 
He's a Premi Ordinus. He's a Centurion. And then we have Quintus, who is a Praetor, um, basically a lawmaker, uh, a ruler of the area. Now, the third person that we have mainly, and we're going to talk about some others that are kind of uh, in and outs uh, in here. But the third person that we have mainly is Atticus. And I know if uh, Denise Key is here, she's she loves Atticus, <laughs> loves that whole thing. It's kind of like um, he's kind of like the secret agent for, for Rome. And so this is an interesting one as well, um, for sure. So let me play this scene. This is the first one where we meet Atticus uh, in general. And so Atticus Amelius. Uh, and what's his last name? Uh, I had it written down somewhere oh atticus Aemilius pulcher is what um is what quintus calls him in episode seven of of season two but um yeah atticus Aemilius is so he's what is called a uh, cohorte urbane which we've talked about previously on this channel um and cohorte urbane it translates to urban cohorts right mm -hmm. so this is kind of interesting because like at least through all the research that I've done uh, that I've done and anybody that's, that's kind of given us some extra stuff, James, Timothy, Denny, um, from all the research that I've done about the, the urban cohorts, um, it really, it doesn't seem like an urban cohort would be here during this time. So from all the reading that I've done, and again, there's not like a ton on the urban cohorts, uh, from what I've found. Um, but essentially from, from my understanding, uh, the urban cohort was basically like a secret agency, um, you know, like a, a, a city police force, basically, for the Roman Empire, within the Roman Empire. And so a cohort, again, is a large group of soldiers that are put together. And so within these cohorts, their specific special task was to basically take care of the city, police the city, and all of that. And so... Um, you know, I didn't see a lot in my research where like there were there would be like random, uh, you know, members of the urban cohort kind of off doing their own thing. Um, also, it, it it feels kind of strange to me that he would be in Jerusalem, uh, that he would be in this area. But at the same time, I could see it maybe making sense just because of the problems that they're having with the assassinations and the rebellion and stuff like that um, of, mm. of the Jewish people. And so, mm, yeah, for me, I think this is the hardest one to kind of uh, fit into the box. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, from my research as well, it was just like, why is a someone who's supposed to be policing uh, in a... Uh, mm -hmm. In well, Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I finished that sentence. You just stopped in the middle. That was it. It's, oh, that if that <laughs> that if somebody that's supposed to be policing in Rome, why would he be in like these smaller places? Yeah. It's almost like he's a um, spy in in this mm -hmm. in the show, which is cool. I love the character. I think the character is amazing, and and I don't yeah. I don't hate on the show at all for having that. I'm not saying yeah, that yeah. like oh they shouldn't have done this. This is so wrong. It's <laughs> oh they've destroyed the Bible because of this, right? We never hear about the urban cohorts in, in scripture, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> but um, in this specific instance. Um, it just doesn't seem like it fits fully, but again, with a, a bunch of other stuff in this show, right. It's, it might be plausible, right. We don't know everything about the Roman empire right. um, and how it works. So is it plausible? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. So anyway, so urban cohort, they're a, a police force. that's mostly in Rome. They're basically a police force for, um, the emperor for Caesar. Right. Um, and, and so Atticus is this person, right? He is, he's an urban, urban cohort, which Quintus at one point says, Hey, I thought you were retired. And Atticus says, well, the, er, the, uh, the cohorte urbane never retire. Right. And so for him, um, this is a lifelong commitment that he's going to keep on doing some cool things that I love about Atticus <clears throat> right here. We can see in this paused frame, you see his breastplate, right? He shows this off as like a badge, uh, sometimes, now we see this is kind of like a standard Roman uh, kind of insignia. We see the SPQR, which um, I wrote it down, stands for um, something cool. Um, <laughs> stands for uh, Senatus Populus uh, Romanus, which basically it's just like a saying that the Romans used to uh, ins uh, to insignify like Rome in general. So the uh, senatus populus romanus is just like the um 
the Senate and the people of Rome, basically, um, if that if that makes sense. So it's just an insignia that kind of shows people, hey, this is who I am. And so, you know, we see him quickly show this off, especially in episode seven, actually, um, as he's talking to the Romans. They think he's just like a, a random Roman citizen that's coming in to, like, demand to see the praetor. Right. Um, but then he immediately shows that and they, they let him do whatever he wants. Basically. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a very high position as well. Um, within the government, this is, you know, imagine the secret service comes to you, right. And, and is asking for something. That's kind of what this is, this is like mm -hmm. for them. So they're related more to the Imperial family and to, um, and to the, the Caesars and everything like that. And so this is a pretty high up, uh, position as well. Yeah. Regarding, I want to bring it all back to the show, right? Like, um, yeah. so somebody had uh, this theory yeah. of Atticus becoming a believer in Jesus also noted that he placed his hand on Jesus' shoulder as he walked past him in Quince's office. I did not remember seeing, I do not remember seeing that, but yeah. Yeah, so you can definitely see um, the change in Atticus, right? Like, so think about episode four of season two. We see him as he's getting ready to assassinate the assassin, right? He's getting ready to counterattack and to kill Simon the Zealot. Um, and he was very aggressive, very ready to kill, right? Like this is his job. He wants to get rid of this insurgency. He wants to get rid of the Zealots and kill all of them, right? Um, he made that extremely, extremely clear. Um, but then we see in episode seven, right? A few episodes later... He's kind of been following Jesus. He's been following Simon the Zealot. He sees as Jesus disarms Simon the Zealot and he picks up his Sicari dagger. Um, and this changes Atticus a bit, right? Mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives him this new understanding of like, oh, maybe people can change, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so he keeps on following um, Jesus and all of them as, as they're going through these things. And he has his information. He brings the information to Quintus. And then when they go to arrest Jesus, right, as they go to detain him, um, Atticus is there the whole time just watching and you can see that he has like a slight he's very curious about him yeah extremely curious but he's also like pleased with him in a way hmm. like well number one right Atticus knows where Simon the Zealot is this whole time he could have gone and like killed him in his sleep but he doesn't why because he's curious about the situation yeah right mm -hmm. um, Atticus could have you know like gone right then when they were arresting Jesus and gone to find Simon the Zealot because he knows he's there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't because he's more curious in Jesus now than the disarmed Simon the Zealot. And so, like, in this whole situation, we see as Atticus becomes more increasingly and increasingly curious to the point where they're in the, the office with Quintus and Jesus, right? And um, and it becomes this whole thing where, where Quintus is talking with Jesus. But in the corner, Atticus is he's like smiling and he's smirking and he's like, he's just loving this whole conversation that's happening, mm -hmm. you know, um, like really impressed with Jesus in some way. So yeah, I a hundred percent could see Atticus coming to faith or, or doing something like that. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, if guy says I am not worthy for him, for I am a man under authority will be so awesome. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that um, passage of scripture um, where the centurion, but he's asking for his daughter to be healed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, we haven't seen any of Gaius's family, if he has any. Mm -hmm. um, it really seems like he doesn't know Jesus in that passage. Yeah. So I don't really think that it's that centurion. Um, but there's several centurions mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. My theory is that it's going to he's going to be one of the centurions. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely possible. And and obviously with with Dallas's like writing the way that he's been doing, I, I it wouldn't surprise me yeah. that he even planned it from the very beginning, you right. know. Um everybody said like right when they heard the name Gaius, like they're all like freaking out cuz Gaius is in the in the scriptures and everything else. Yeah. Um but yeah, the way the way he talked to Quintus it seemed like they were on the same power level. You know, it's interesting, Nancy, because I think I'm, I don't think they're necessarily on the same power level, but I think they're in two different parts of the government. Right. So like Atticus is kind of in this like imperial military system, while Quintus is kind of on this political system, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So they're kind of in two different like think of it like in the U.S. We have these different branches of government. Right. Um, not necessarily more powerful, but different in the way that they they are 
And so I think it's more like that where they're both very powerful in their own right, in their own um, kind of uh, positions. Um, but in this situation, Quintus is definitely more powerful because this is his land. This is where he rules. Right. Um, and so he has more that's control why he, here for sure. That's why Atticus goes to him to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it is almost like he kisses his butt because he's so close to Caesar. Is how he portrays it. Like who? Atticus. Um, Pontius. Uh, Pilot. No, Quintus. Quintus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quintus like says like, "Aren't you supposed to be wherever it is?" Yeah. So. If he does go to Jesus, it will be in large part from Matthew's influence. He may feel Matthew uh, may put it in a good word for him. Yeah, for Gaius. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see kind of where we go in season three. I know that in season three, I mean, I'm, I'm betting that we'll probably get a lot of character de development from Matthew specifically. Yeah. I know Dallas has talked about um, specifically how Matthew's uh, dress is going to change. So his costume and the way that he dresses himself, right? Mm -hmm. All the way up until the end of season two, we see as Matthew is wearing this, the same exact clothing, right? Mm -hmm. We see as he's, he's wearing, um, and with poop on it <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing this really nice clothing yeah. right um kind of exemplifying his status as a tax collector his status as um you know this high member of society um but this is not necessarily what matthew wants to be portrayed as anymore right mm -hmm. um and so he's definitely going to be changing his clothing as well high position or more likely with higher power behind the badge mm -hmm. roman Emp empire had 100 million people in it last uh at the time of jesus and there were almost seven hundred and fifty thousand jews at this time <clears throat> when do you think roman leaders um in rome heard about jesus you know i think that i i doubt that a lot of them ever did right mm -hmm. like some of them probably heard the stories of like <clears throat> oh this guy got killed and then we heard stories of him being raised from the dead mm -hmm. but just like today how people don't like believe those kind of things i think that it would be similar where maybe many of the the leaders in Rome never heard of it until, you know, Christianity started taking over in that area. You know, we get Roman Catholicism and all of that stuff too. Um, but um, I think there's a good chance that many of them died without ever hearing about it, you know, or, or uh, knowing what was going on. But I think the immediate leaders would have heard about it immediately because there was this, obviously this huge Christian presence that started to grow rapidly. Um, you know, with that was Paul causing issues with the Pharisees and all that. Yeah. And Christianity obviously spread to Rome as well. So I'm, I'm, I mean, it's possible that they did. It's possible that everybody understood during that time. I just don't know off the top of my head um, if, if that was a widely spread thing. Um, I do know that obviously Paul wrote Romans, right? <laughs> Which is a letter to the yeah. church in Rome. Um, and so this is obviously, you know, something that was there during that time. So. And in Acts, um, when he's speaking, when he's like doing apologetics, like heavy. Yeah hitting um yeah. to an unknown god where is that do you know what city that would be in? um athens is it in rome oh is it in greece i don't i don't remember i have no idea i don't i don't remember it's probably that. it's probably greece i think it's i think it's in athens yeah i think so i don't know 100 <laughs> percent yeah quintus is like a governor and gaius is like the police force uh gaius is more like um he's more like a military personnel than a police force. Atticus is more like a, the police force. So Atticus is more like the emperor's personal police guard. Uh, Gaius is more like, um, yeah, like, like an army officer, um, like an army general, an army, I don't know what, what the words are because I've never been in the military. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, more like military for sure. Because remember, they're an occupying force. So he's not like a nice police officer that's coming and being like, hey, are you okay? Is everything okay with you? He's like, Give me, give me the money that you owe me. Um, you know, are you doing anything wrong? Should I kill you right now? You know, that's the sort of aggressiveness. <laughs> I'll just take it off. Yeah, that's probably best. Um, that's the sort of aggressiveness that he has. You know, it's it's not this like nice sort of like policeman that wants to protect you and take care of you. It's a military officer that has just taken over your country and wants to make sure that you're not going to mess anything up. Mm -hmm. um and so it's a totally different feel i think but but yeah pretty close 
I did notice Jesus did make a number of eye contacts with Atticus. Yeah. Made me go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll see how that how that kind of develops. It's interesting how Dallas has developed these characters. It seems to me that they have plenty of good characters to draw from. The Roman Marcus from season one could be at the cross too. Hey, that's True. a good uh, that's a good um, observation, and uh, that's a good segue into talking about Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> so right here we have Marcus, who we meet from season one. Right here, this is the part of uh, of season one where he is. Um, going basically into the synagogue um, to see Nicodemus and to basically tell him, hey, you have to go to the Red Quarter, you have to come with me. We don't actually find his name out, I don't think, until episode six or seven of season one, uh, where Gaius actually is talking to him and he says, oh, okay, Marcus, and uh, kind of says that. But um, yeah, this is Marcus, I think the only other named Roman that we have. And so, um, so yeah, we haven't seen him at all in season two. Um, so I don't know if he's actually going to continue to be a character. Uh, well are they not in Capernaum? Capernaum. They were in Capernaum at one point. I mean, they were in Quintus's office. So true. Um, which I believe is in Capernaum because that's where Matthew was stationed and all of that. So yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is Marcus. Um, not a huge role, but he has a couple of key points in season one. And then the other uh, person who we, we saw kind of part of the Roman government um, was this guy. Um, who Atticus meets with in episode four of season two. Uh, I don't think we get a name from this guy, but he's basically an advisor to the magistrate of Jerusalem. And so, um, you know, kind of this higher up within the Jerusalem structure here, um, he's kind of like an advisor to him. And so Atticus is talking to him because he believes that someone is targeting his boss, targeting the magistrate, and that, um, you know, they need to do something about it, basically. So, uh, yeah, this character obviously is is adorned in heavy Roman garb, and Atticus even calls him out for it, right? He's like, could you look any more Roman? Basically, <laughs> they're, they're trying to have this quiet meeting, but he's, you know, looks like the biggest Roman in the world. And so... Um, <laughs> And so this becomes an issue kind of for, for Atticus because, you know, he wants to be quiet, but yeah, uh, we don't get much information about this guy. Basically he's just, uh, you know, an underling of the magistrate of Jerusalem. And so, um, yeah, this becomes an interesting, interesting point as well. So, Oh, cool. Matthew's saying that his name was given episode one. Okay, cool. I haven't watched episode one in a while. That's probably why, um, tells Marcus he should learn the language that keeps their, their peace. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so this is the the other like main Roman guy that I've that I that I could remember. If you guys know any more, let me know, and we'll try to pull him up. But um, yeah, these are, these are the only main Roman people that we've seen, other than like kind of right uh, random soldiers mm -hmm. or anything like that. So um, yeah, a lot of really cool stuff. And the Roman Empire within <laughs> within itself is so intense, and there's so much to to kind of go through and talk about. I'm sure that we'll dive. Uh, even deeper into it as we move on through the seasons, especially when we meet Caiaphas and Pilate and all of that. Yeah. Um, Just going through the government structure versus mm -hmm. the military structure. That was yeah. crazy. In and of <laughs> yeah. It's a lot for sure. And even maybe looking into, um, you know, Herod um, Antipas and um, all that goes along with that. Remember yeah, that Jesus, was confusing. Jesus goes in front of Herod, which is like the Tetrarch, which is the one who also kills John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. His wife, Herodias is the one who wants to kill John the Baptist because John the Baptist is basically bad mouthing her saying that she's uh, having incest, you know, um, which is a big deal. So I can't wait for season three. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you there for sure. <laughs> Gina Rogers. Thank you so thank much you so for the much. for the super chat for the uh, super sticker. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to uh, send us over a super sticker, you can you don't have to for sure. Uh, definitely just helps out these streams and helps us to uh, to research more Roman stuff. <laughs> to have time to do that so uh yeah thank you so much gina you rock um yeah i'm a chosen nerd who's seen season one more times than i can count <laughs> nice matthew nice yep we're about to go all the way back through uh season one by the way so we're gonna we're gonna do three episodes i think three videos on our channel about episode eight the finale of season two and then once we're done with that we're gonna go back into season one and um and talk about everything that's going on there so there's so much to dig into mm -hmm. i can't wait to the episode with nicodemus uh mm -hmm. talking about him and jesus talking uh how much of that is from scripture i love that scene yeah. um you know the woman at the well obviously the season finale of season one super super good 
uh, when all the fish, when all the fish are coming up onto the, onto the boat, when Jesus is talking to them about that, there's just so many things that are, um, beautiful about season one and talking about even just the cinematography and everything that's, that's going on there. So, um, I cannot wait to get, um, to get back into all of that. So season one's coming for sure. Off topic from Romans, but could the businessman, uh, Oh, from from episode eight of season two, uh, be Matthias, someone who someone who seems even more hopeless than jo- Judas, but replaces him. I have no idea. <laughs> it's possible, I guess, um, but we'll see. I, I don't think that guy's going to stick around for very long. If I had my guess, my guess would be he's going to continue to run the salt mine that they just bought, and he's going to continue doing business here. And then you know the apprentice Judas is going to leave um, and follow Jesus. So I don't like sleazy guy. <laughs> I don't. You have to remember too, like all of us are making these guesses, but like we're like five, six months into a three year journey, you know, Very like, true. like yeah. there's, there's so much time left in Jesus's ministry before all the stuff is going to happen where he's, you know, he gets killed. Yeah. All so. the growth that the disciples go through. Cause they're obviously still very immature. Yeah. Does Vanessa have a favorite character so far? Jesus. Jesus. Um, other Ma- than Jesus, we'll just caption Mary that. Mary Magdalene. I um, relate, not to the full extent, but I just, I just love her scenes. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I have his temper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, yeah. uh-huh. even though it was annoying, I feel like I've been all through all of that. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I relate to a little bit of. Well, except for Nathaniel, I'm not an architect. <laughs> i really really like nathaniel i think the way that he speaks so honestly and like to the point i like people like that because i don't like wasting time i just want to get to the point and like do it you know Uh um but also um i love the character of eden the way that she balances out eden she's great Uh, nicodemus even though (laughs) (laughs) i love what are all the characters again (laughs) (laughs) um just even thinking about just eden right like the way that she balances out peter and and the i don't know just how amazing that whole thing is i i love thinking about that so it's it's i'm excited to see tamar more tamar mm -hmm, to see her character fleshed out yeah especially since we don't hear of her in scripture sure yeah. yeah um yeah for sure Timothy, thank you so much for the five dollars super sticker. Dang. You guys rock. Timothy's already one of our members. A, a member. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, members are cool. You, you guys can see in the chat right now. If you look next to their names, they'll have a little uh, egg there. Now the members who are uh, have been the members the longest, like Raquel, you see as her egg is starting to crack. And so the longer that you're a member, uh, the more your little icon will change until it becomes something really cool. So <laughs> you got to keep on watching those and see how those kind of, uh, you know, evolve over time. So, um, yep. It was a fantastic job tonight, Blythe. You are both amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys have a great night for sure. Okay. Rutkel Torres. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, you know, they are actors. Uh, they are actors in the Bible. I'm not hundred percent sure what you mean by that. You mean like the Romans are actors, like they're part of what happens oh, in yeah. the Bible. Is true, that what you true, mean? True, 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 true. Um, yeah, definitely. They're definitely a huge part of what, what everything is um you know how everything is going to culminate they are the ones who crucify jesus right yeah um that wouldn't have happened without them so yeah matthew thank you so much <laughs> you rock as well thanks one of our you're patrons. also a patron <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks, so much thanks so much for the support guys we you really guys appreciate awesome. it you know my favorite part about having this channel is not like you know getting to make these videos or like or e- even like you know having patrons or channel members or whatever else. It's just the fact that we have a community that is awesome. And we get to talk about the chosen. We get to talk about uh, Christianity and and all that kind of goes along with that. And so it's been super cool to get to know you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't wait to see what the next year brings and the next year and the next year uh, to see what God's going to make of this channel. And so, um, yeah, we're just putting our trust in him. And we had a big conversation about that today, actually. But um, yeah, just leaving our trust in him to, to do whatever, you know, he wants to do with this channel. So can we do story time with Vanessa real quick? Yeah, you can. Um, So back in 2017, we tried to start a ministry, which um, to create community. And so just to see how God has transformed that into, <laughs> sorry, 
just to see how God has transformed that into this, where we're creating that community. And you guys are so awesome. The, the, how you guys hold each other up. Like I can see that, right? Like I can see, um, you guys praying for each other and, and saying nice things to one another or teaching one another. That's so amazing. Um, and from people that are all around the world, not just where locally, right? Yeah. Like that's the community we wanted to build was, to encourage churches, right? Like we want to be a more unified church, not in a Unitarian sense, but in a, in a, we need to love one another so that people, the world will see that we are his disciples, right? That's what it says in John uh, 13, 35 through 37. Um, but yeah, that's, that's our desire. That's my desire. Um, that's Brandon's desire is to just create um, a community where we love on one another. Yeah, for sure. Like, like this is a great example right here, where um, oh. uh, we, we've got Donna Anderson who says uh, we get to be a part of your life, and you are a part of ours, not your mom, Donna Anderson. <laughs> and so, if you guys were here for another live stream that we did, the inside joke here is that my mom's name is actually Donna Anderson, and so we've had three or four Donna Andersons come into the chat, and I never know if it's my mom or not my mom. <laughs> and so uh, Donna has been very gracious with us to uh, to keep on reminding us, Hey, I'm not your mom. So <laughs> thank you so much, Donna. Um, super, super good. <laughs> awesome. I, I wanted to do this one. Uh, Pat Riley says, do you fear as a series has five years left in it? Some actors, some of the actors may leave and their characters are replaced by new actors. I pray that Jesus actor, uh, doesn't uh hold out for more money as his fame grows yeah <laughs> we'll see i think he's getting enough money for sure i think that he'll get he'll get paid more and more as the series goes on but also i think he has a lot of other ventures that he's been a part of such as the hallow app and um and mm -hmm. some different things like that and so he's definitely um you know he's he's doing well with his the business side of being an actor which is a great thing just like we need money to run this youtube channel to get cameras and you know we we pay for this streaming software we pay for the equipment that we're using to stream right um we pay for our cameras and our sd cards and our computers to edit those things right um and so all of it costs money and so to keep on going in it um i think that he's been doing a great job um with all of that you know the business side of it um but i, I don't think um I don't think I'm worried too much. I think a lot of the actors seem very committed. Uh, when I look at their social media accounts or anything else, like they they seem very excited about the show. Yeah. Genuinely, it's not just like another job for them. I don't think. I think it's it's obviously a job, and obviously they're getting paid, and obviously they should get paid. Um, and as the show grows, they should get paid more too. But um, but I, I don't think I'm really afraid of them leaving. And if they do, like, oh well. <laughs> you know someone else will come along and, and dallas well, like we saw with up, james you know? big james he got switched right. out three there's times. been three big jameses so far so <laughs> I, I think it'll be okay regardless and I, the biggest thing for me is i'm trusting god um to take care of everything and i'm trusting dallas to trust god to take care of everything you know uh for the show mm -hmm. because i believe that i really truly believe that this is a god-ordained show and that, that a lot of things that have happened um you know either while filming or whatever like god has had his hand all over it so not that the people are perfect, not that they can never make mistakes. I believe that they will. And I, there's been some things that I've been criti critical about, you know, um, that the that, that chosen maybe and I have disagreed upon as well. You know, we talked about like the hand from uh, from episode six. Right. Um, <laughs> for me, it was a letdown. But but for them, it was a choice. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyways, beyond all of that, I think that I, I trust God to take care of uh, take care of the show uh, beyond all the human stuff. So. Um. I agree with Matthew. I can't say I've seen a single character that isn't interesting. Everything is so well thought out. Yes, yeah. I love all the characters. They've been they've been great for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> yeah. I have started watching season one again. Awesome. Yeah, we're about to go th through it really in depth again, uh, Patricia. So or Patricia, Patricia, Patricia. What are you saying? I'm trying to say her name, but I messed it up and I'm sorry for that. I apologize. Um, it's working, Vanessa. The community is growing. I was yeah. just about to put that one up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it's funny because it's so weird to us because, you know, whenever you start doing something and it, and it begins to, you know, take off or whatever else, you get acclimated to that. And so like yesterday, for example, we got like maybe like 15 to 20 subscribers 
which for us is an extremely low day. I mean, that's like, it's really, really low for now, but you know, back in, in, you know, four or five months ago, if we had that many in a day, we'd be freaking out. We'd be like, <laughs> yes, like this is amazing. What's happening right yeah. now? You know? And so you get acclimated to kind of where you're at in your journey. And so since we've been growing so fast, um, you know, we just want to have everything in God's hands. Mm. So if he wants us to stop growing, cool. We'll just have the community that we have. Yeah. If he wants us to continue growing, awesome. Then we'll grow the community even more and we'll spread his name. We'll spread his fame because that's what our life is about, right? It's mm. just to glorify God and, yeah. and whatever we do. So that's our goal. hundred percent. Didn't notice the first time watching the finale, but Jesus skips the part about the prophets must have added that line when he said it live. I don't know exactly what you're talking about there. Do you know? no is it in the sermon on the mount clarify that for us uh matthew if you can it's always nice to be able to spend time with friends uh who you can be who you really are with for example i'm the oldest of nine kids i'm an only chosen nerd when i'm here i'm among other nerds yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yep the nerd force is strong here for sure yes <laughs> So glad to have you, Matthew. Absolutely. Um, yeah, many of the actors were ready to, to leave acting in general, and God stepped in. Yeah, absolutely. I know that uh, many of the, the actors kind of talked about that beforehand as well, um, you know, moving on to a different profession, because it's hard. I mean, can you imagine being in the field like that and and trying to make it, you know, trying to, to be the best? Um, man, that would be hard. Uh, we need to back Jonathan Ruby on IG and Dallas on YouTube. Yeah, sure. I don't think Dallas posts anything on YouTube. He does have his own account, but I only think he has like 100 subscribers or something weird. Like, no, he has more than that probably, but he doesn't have very many because like he doesn't post anything on there. He just he just uses it to talk to people. So um, Jonathan has been with Dallas uh, for several years and has done other Christ plays with Dallas. So I think he will be there until the end. Yeah, they're very good friends. Obviously, you can see that from anytime that they're behind the scenes together when they're joking. I mean, Dallas, even, you know, in this last behind the scenes, he even made, you know, some Catholic jokes to him just talking about what the Catholic community was going to do and all of that stuff. And you can see that Jonathan's not upset by it at all. You know, yeah. he knows exactly who Dallas is and how he's going to act. And, um, you know, it's definitely interesting seeing their, their relationships. So likes are free. Yeah. Right now you can like the video for free. How amazing is that? You can just click that button. <laughs> what a like does is it, it shows the algorithm that this video is good enough to pass on to somebody else. And so if you like us, if you want to share our content with other people, uh, the best ways to do that is to hit a like on this video, to share the video on your Facebook or, um, or anywhere else, or just tell word of mouth and say, Hey, you, do you like the chosen? I heard about this channel, the snipe life. You should go subscribe to them and see what they're doing. Um, and that will really, really help us out. So um, do you think Dallas will hold back showing Jesus siblings to the Catholic fans? You know, I've thought about this a lot, but Catholic, uh, Catholic Dallas, um, actually, like I just said, he kind of jokes with Jonathan Rumi, uh, in the, in the last behind the scenes, he says, you know, next season when I introduce Jesus's siblings, uh, you know, everybody will be mad at me and they're going to be whipping me through the Vatican, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's this joke that Dallas says, but I, I, you know, Dallas is a, is a evangelical Christian. I'm sure that he believes that Jesus had siblings, you know? Um, I don't think that's going to stop him from, you know, that people are going to stop him from putting that in the series because it's an integral part of the series. It really is. Um, not only for right now, but for later mm -hmm. on, as, you know, James comes in, the brother of Jesus who writes the book of James, right? Um, from an evangelical perspective, um, I don't think that, that that's going to stop Dallas from, from doing that. But do you have any thoughts on that? No, <laughs> um, no, there's going to be a lot of naysayers. Sure. Um, well, everybody has different opinions, right? And everybody has different perspectives. Yeah. Right? But the biblical truth is that he did have yeah. siblings. So I agree. And I feel like if he's, he's following that, then I do think that he's going to put, like you said, I think you wrapped it up well. I hope the show can get fully supported soon. I think Dallas is hoping to get the final five seasons done faster than the five, than five years. Yeah, it's possible. It takes a long time to film. I yeah. mean, um, look how many people they had, right? They're, they're going to do the feeding of the 5,000 for season three. They're going to need just as many people, if not more extras for that scene. And that's going to take a lot of time to prepare, a lot of time to shoot. 
a lot of time to edit, right? All of it is going to take a long time. And uh, that's just one portion of the season. And they want to make it bigger and better every season too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's going to take a long time. And I think we have to kind of sit in our seats, <laughs> be ready for that. Yeah. And uh, he has yeah. voice though, that he wants it to like, people are aging. Like, you know, yeah, like as the yeah, time passes, yeah, people yeah. are aging and um, he, he has voice that he wants to get it done as fast as possible. But like you said, yeah. it takes a lot of, and he also can't burn himself out and kill himself, you know, like yeah. you said the other night, you know, he's, he's tired mm. and I'm glad that he's, he's probably moved to Texas by now. And, you know, he's chilling out for a little bit. I hope, um, you know, at least a couple of days off to, to kind of chill and relax. But um, man, I can't imagine being as burnt out as that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely hard. Um, hey, y'all just joining from Northern Nevada. Uh, the good part, not Vegas. <laughs> What's up, Kelly? Welcome to the stream for sure. Uh, glad to have you. Absolutely. Uh, this movie. It's a beautiful name. You chose great. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you guys are great. Keep up the great work. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, June. We appreciate it for sure. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you uh, commenting for sure. Again, if you guys can't comment at this very moment, if you're trying to comment and you can't, I have the I have the stream in subscriber only mode. And so if you just subscribe immediately, you should have access to the chat uh, just like that. So. Jonathan is in his 40s now. He looks younger. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he does not look that old at all. Um, That's not old. Rephrase that, dude. He does not look that age at all. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I think Dallas will show it um, how he believes is the truth in scripture. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. Um, as a Catholic myself, I was taught that Jesus may have had step siblings because Joseph was a widower, so he could have had other children. Hmm, interesting. I've never heard that before. I don't think that Joseph was married before Mary. Yeah. As far as I understand. Um, from anything that I've read in scripture or that I've heard before, I don't think that's that's the case. Again, I think I think there's just things that we're going to disagree on, but just like Vanessa said earlier, right? It's all about unity. And so for us, like even if I may disagree with a Catholic perspective, right? I believe that there is still unity in Christ mm -hmm. and that he's going to unify us no matter what. Um, you know, as long as you don't, as long as there are things that are, are not, you know, uh, kind of pillar breaking, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I've explained my, the, the, the idea of my bag before, right. Where in my bag, I have things that I, I may have opinions about, but I'm never going to fight people over. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those things that's kind of in the middle for me because like in scripture, it seems like it's pretty true. Like, this is probably the way that it should be. But again, it doesn't matter for salvation. So I'm never going to fight you about it. You know, like mm -hmm. if we if we uh, disagree and yes, they would be half siblings. Right. Because Joseph never actually gave his DNA for Christ to be born. Right. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, he can't be old. I'm 60 and I'm definitely not. Yeah, old. you're definitely not old, Matthew. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Wednesday, he arrives in Texas, he said. He's packing up up north. Okay, cool. Um, as the popularity grows, so will people who have different opinions. Mm -hmm. Not everyone loved Jesus when he was alive. Yeah, absolutely, Donna, um, for sure. And also, we're going to get other religions that want to peek in and, and try to make their own claim on different stuff. I'm sure that Muslims watch the show. I'm sure that Hindus watch the show. I'm sure that Sikhs watch the show. Um, and I love that they're watching the show. You know, I know that atheists and non-Christians are watching the show as well because The Chosen has showed up on a lot of lists for like the best show of the summer, mm -hmm. you know, the best show of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it is such a great thing because finally there's a Christian show that is enjoyable, whether you're a Christian or not, first of all, but that allows you to encounter Christ in a way that is not, um, it's not scary. It's not, um, you know, nobody's attacking you. Um you know, in a way that is, it's just better, uh, in a way that is, it's just easier to kind of digest if that makes sense. So I love Atticus's expression as Gaius handed, uh, Quintus, the, uh, the flyer for the sermon on the Mount. I so appreciate your guys insights, uh, that I didn't know about before even being a Christian for over 40 years. Yeah. I think we're all, um, we're all learning all the time. I'm learning all the time. And I think the show has probably doubled my knowledge, um, of scripture just in general, you know, before I would probably have a pretty hard time naming all 12 of the disciples, but now because I have faces to link with names, it makes it so much easier for me. 
mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, and that's the one thing that i love about the show and i just want to shout out um i was shouting out karen there karen is also one of our, our patreon supporters and so thank you so much karen for that um you're really really awesome so yep exactly yeah matthew five thousand isn't just five thousand people that only counted adult men. So right. it's most likely 15,000 to 20,000. Absolutely. Yep. I think they're going to have to use some CGI for that. Cause I don't think they're going to have 20,000 extras. That would be a, a lot of people mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Yep. What's up, Vanessa? How are you? Good to see you again. I always love saying the same people in chat. Uh, Tracy Frazier also, um, one of our uh, Patreon supporters. So thank you so much, Tracy, uh, for being awesome. And Lord willing, yeah, we will get eight seasons. I, I believe that we will. I, I, I don't think that there's any way that we don't because this is the number one crowdfunded project ever, right? And people want to give more. And every month people want to give more. And every year people want to give more. Mm -hmm. And as more and more people watch the show, right? I'm still trying to get my friends to like the show. <laughs> a lot of them a lot of them know to about To watch my, it. Because yeah. as soon as they get past like episode one and two because it's yep. confusing and they don't fully understand what's going on yep. then they'll fall in love with the show yeah and like with my friends like i'm still trying to get them to watch like like all of them know about this channel they want to support us but they don't watch our videos right because they're not caught up on the chosen yet right <laughs> and so they're still stuck on like episode one episode two or episode you know like three or four of season one and so i'm like dude just watch it like we just need to have a big watch party at the church or at, at my house or something but um <laughs> but we need to get people caught up for sure um because the more people that are caught up, the more people that will be interested in in backing this project and really being a part of it, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to keep on paying it forward, especially as we get into season three, because a lot of those things benefit us, right? Like if we can see the episodes early and all of that stuff, um, you know, but we also just want to support the show. And obviously mm -hmm. this channel, that's what we're about, <laughs> you know, for right now, we're talking about The Chosen because we want people to watch the show because we think it's impactful not that the show is the end all be all not that the show replaces scripture right like i like we said it's about building community about building each other up yeah and that show happens to be the vehicle that we're using yeah absolutely yep sometimes i don't know how i feel about posting putting these up on the screen because it's like oh <laughs> yeah but <laughs> it's like but we're recognizing Audrey. That's yes, what we're doing. So yes. Audrey, thank you so much. We did see this. Brandon and Vanessa, I'm so impressed with you and Snipe Life. Binge watched the Snipe Life last night. You really complimented Dang. Chosen. Uh, <laughs> blessed to be a subscriber. We're blessed to have you, Audrey. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can help the Chosen by going to IMDB and creating an account, then giving the show a good review in five stars. Interesting. I didn't know about that, Kelly. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, definitely do that. Uh, you know, give them good reviews on on everywhere, right? Um, again, on everywhere, on everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that helps out as well. Share it on Facebook; that's another huge thing. Um, Instagram, all that stuff. So, yep, yeah. We already know that the chosen is uh, ninety percent fictional, uh, fictional, as Dallas has said. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, Connie. Um, yeah, this is not scripture, right? This is not something that we can just sit down and study and be like, oh, God's speaking to me. God can speak to you through the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it has to be in his way, right? Yeah. You're not going to sit down and say, oh, well, Atticus is here. You know, he must have been a, a crucial part of the scriptures. He didn't exist, right? Quintus didn't exist, right? Um we don't know if this is the same Gaius from scripture. He might not have existed, right? Yeah. Tamar didn't exist as far as we know. The only thing is it's plausible for them to have existed, right? And so all of this, um, everything that we're seeing here, um, it's important that we understand that for sure. Because uh, we take the show as the show, right? Treat it as the same thing that I treat, like Jesus take the wheel from Carrie Underwood, right? Uh, it's the same thing. Like it's, it's, a, it's a art piece for God that can speak you know, that God can speak through, but that's all it is. It's an art piece for God. And so if I disagree with things in the show, I get over it. Yeah. Same. I hardly knew the disciples names, but now I can read the Bible and actually see the characters instead of them just being black and white on a page. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I might have had my own kind of ideas of what they looked like, but they weren't fleshed out. Right. Like I didn't have a full understanding and, and I, I say it's very similar to when you go to Israel. I was about to say, imagine going to Israel. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. When I first went to Israel, Brandon went when he was in high school. Uh, we spoke about that some at some point. Yeah. Um, but he went when he was in high school and he kept telling me, like, we need to go to Israel. We need to go to Israel. And then um, he finally took me in 2017. 
And when I went, it was just like, first of all, it's like, oh, so much information. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's amazing to see where where he might have walked, where where he may have been laying, where like the 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 walk to um the crucifixion. Yeah. Uh, all of that. It's just so beautiful to see it because most of the stuff is almost almost still intact yeah right like and you can see the architectural sites where they're the digging Vida Rosa, that's what you're talking about yes yeah so yeah just the fact that the, the steps to the temple are intact and you can go to the steps that jesus stood on the fact that you can go to the jordan river the same river that he was baptized in the fact that you can um you know let's talk about season one and two right we see these different places capernaum the fact mm -hmm. that you can walk through the streets of capernaum Look at the synagogue that's there, right? Like, see like physically Peter's be there, house, possibly literally see Peter's house with a church built on top of it, right? <laughs> There's a church literally that they built over it, and you can see through the glass floor of the church, um, and see as as Peter's house is sitting there, right? A place that Jesus would have stayed, right? So these places that we know that we know that we know that Jesus was walking, that he has touched, that he was there, the Sea of Galilee which is the exact same as it was, right? Mm -hmm. You can go on a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee and and worship while you're there and, and do different things, but it's amazing, right? Um, and um, yeah, it's so, so cool. And some of my favorite things are things that we got to bring back, right? And this is why we have a partnership with Arts of Box, if you guys haven't seen that. Um, Arts of Box is a subscription box that you can get quarterly, right? So every quarter they send you this big box with filled with a ton of stuff, all locally from Israel, right? And so basically they go to these shop owners and they say, hey, you make pottery? Would you mind putting your pottery in my subscription box for this month? You know, I need you to make thousands and thousands. So they pay them good money to make this pottery and they put it in the box and then they sell the box, right? Um, so you guys could get that. Actually, you get 20% off of that box if you use our code, which is in the description below if you guys want to do that. Um, Snipe 20 at checkout. And, um, and yeah, you guys can do that. But the amazing thing about this box is like, if you can't afford, you know, a $4,000 ticket to go to Israel and do, do this whole tour, um, you can literally get local items that you could buy there, right. From merchants that, that are local people, not like these vendors that are actually making stuff in China and then shipping it to Israel. Um, yeah. Some of the vendors they list, we actually saw when we were there. Yeah. We had actually met when we were there, which is crazy. You know, um, there's this guy that makes olive wood stuff in, in Bethlehem and, um, you know, we got to meet him and see how he makes his wood and stuff. Um, but he, he has some stuff that sends in these boxes as well. So anyway, a little plug there, but it's, it's really, it's a really, really cool thing. If you can't go to Israel, that's another cool thing to kind of experience some of their culture. So uh, question when reading scriptures now, do you imagine a certain disciple saying something, even if it's not mentioned, for instance, I can almost hear Andrew yelling at Simon as he walks on the mm -hmm. water. <laughs> interesting uh, i haven't experienced that myself but peter what are you doing or simon, <laughs> simon yeah, yeah. Uh, i haven't experienced that myself but uh yeah quite quite interesting for sure um yeah i'd say i'd say definitely a lot of people have that that feeling now especially just seeing the characters speak as we read the scripture but I also went to Israel when I was in middle school. It was a neat experience. Got to swim in the Dead Sea. Yeah, the Dead Sea is super cool as well. So cool. Because it's so salty that you you literally float on top. You can't like sink down into it uh, very well. And so it's really like thick water, basically. Um, very, well, very salty. It's not thick. Hmm? It's not like physically thick. It is. It's more min minerally. Yeah, yeah. You could feel the minerally. But anyway, <laughs> it's not like going into uh -huh. a mud Unless you get into the mud parts. Sure, sure. <laughs> but the mud is very valuable. They sell it from everywhere because it's filled with minerals. So yeah. it's supposed to help you with your skin and everything else. Um, anyway, all right. Well, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Anything else you want to grab before we before we get going? It also helps to support Israel uh, while much of the world has boycotted Israel products. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, what was he? <laughs> Brandon, have you been inspired to write any songs from Chosen Insights? Uh, no, not yet. Um, but I'm sure that will happen at some point. I don't know. Uh, so keep, keep tight. Um, oh, real quick. I'll do a, can I do a poll on here? Let me see. Let me see if I can figure this out real fast. Um, 
I want to see if I can do a poll because I want to see if um, I can get some. Oh, I can do it right here. I messed it up. Let me go back. Um, I want to see something. So if you're in this chat right now. Um, <laughs> me not muting myself. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> Let me do a poll real fast and Vanessa will talk while I do that. All righty. This is not my strong suit. How are you guys? He's doing a poll. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Here's one. Um, are there posts of you singing? There are. Um, yeah. He released an EP. And uh, you can find those on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, every, anything. Just search Brandon Snipe. He's got like his hands like like this. <laughs> it's called Arela. Yep. Arela? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell you guys the story about that real fast as we answer this poll. Um, all right. So here's the poll. You guys let me know. Would you guys attend a Snipe Life worship night uh, if we had one here on the stream? Um, you know, just me kind of hanging out here. Uh, you know, Vanessa will uh, correspond with your chats. Maybe she'll jump in on a few songs and sing with me. Maybe I'll make her play guitar on stream. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but would you guys um, would you guys want to do that? So let me know uh, below. And uh, go ahead and answer that poll so I have a better idea about who would come if that's the case. Um yeah, so I put out an EP in January uh, called Araya, and so Araya is a Hebrew name. Um, you know, it's super interesting. When I was in when I was in uh, middle school, I used to do this thing with my hands where I would I would trace my palm uh, with my with my thumbs, and it was just kind of like a nervous tick thing that I did. You know, passing the time, I was kind of bored or whatever, um, and um, and it was it was interesting because I, I I like looked at my hands and at one point I was like, hey, that like kind of spells a word. And so I could kind of see in my in my palm uh, A R E L A, um, and I was like, okay, well, let me Google it. So I typed it up, and it turns out um, that it's a Hebrew girl's name, um, Araya, which it's super interesting because Araya in Hebrew means messenger of God. And so for me, it was like confirmation that you know, first of all, that I had a place in in what God wanted to do, and um, and to walk in that, but also that um, you know. I knew that any music that I put out in the future or something like that would be um, kind of under that name. And so Araya became a, a big part of my music journey as well. So let me see. Uh, looks like we can't do it, guys. It's only 97% yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, um, yeah. Someone said a Bible study would be cool too. We should yeah, for sure. probably plan one of those. I'll probably make Vanessa do one of those. Um, okay. I'll do the worship nights. She does the Bible studies. She's pretty epic Bible studier. So um, <laughs> anyway, no, we'll, we'll probably do both of those things for sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, uh, I will definitely Bruh. put out another poll on our community post soon. So make sure you're looking out for that. I'm going to put out another poll talking about worship night and all of that stuff. But for tonight, we're done talking about the Romans. Um, I will probably take this video and, and, cut it down uh, to something else. So we're going to do an outro here so I can kind of cut out this middle section and then get to the outro real fast. So anyway, love you guys so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this live stream. I appreciate you guys so much just being able to hang out with you, talk to you. I feel like no time has passed, but it's been like, you know, a ton of time. So it's been like, an yeah, hour when we hit an hour, I was like, what? <laughs> like it didn't feel like that. It really did. not Yeah. I just love talking to you guys. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that the Roman stuff was helpful to give you a better idea of who Gaius is, what he's in charge of, who Quintus is, what he's in charge of, and Atticus as well. So, um, yeah, we've got some cool Roman people. I hope we get to learn more about them in season three. But anyway, I hope you like this video. <laughs> Thanks for being part of our community. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace. See you guys later. Have a good night. Peace out. Goodbye.